Hello guys, I'm back. I had a day off yesterday and I decided that I want to do a the first instruction video. So I'll put that on the uh, front of my um, channel so that when people ask me about certain ingredients or certain ways to do stuff, I can uh, direct them to this video. So first off, um, the most important thing when you want to start this uh, hobby is that um, you have to decide what you want to do. You want to decide, do I want to go with the quality products or do I just want to go with very cheap and easy to access ingredients. First thing that um, I'd like to tell you is that I think, you know, if you first start this and you're not very confident with what you're doing, then I would suggest that you just um, work on very cheap canvases or canvas boards and um, just go from there. But if you're really serious, you want to sell your products, then you have to look at your canvas. And this is a, a museum quality canvas. And I'm pretty sure that this is um, the way to go if you want to sell. So I'm going to put this aside for a bit. And then we're going to talk about uh, the paint. So if you ask me, I would say go for a quality paint because it makes everything so much easier and if you stick to one brand and preferably a good brand then you get to know your paint and you know exactly what it does which colors take over and which colors don't and it just makes your whole thing so much easier so what i have here is um, a little bit of turquoise green from amsterdam acrylics and I am adding a little bit of water. I did um, just about, I'd say 50 milliliters of paint. And I added about um, 20 to 30% percent pouring medium. And then now I am mixing it with water to get the right consistency. Now, why do we add the pouring medium? That's a good question because the pouring medium, because we have to uh, thin it down so much, uh, that thins the binder in the paint. And if you want it to really keep its consistency and, you know, the nice and smooth, um, nice and smooth touch that we really like, we have to add something to make up for all the water we're adding to that paint. So that's why we add pouring medium. So right now I'm putting little bits of water in, very little bit of water, and then stirring it up. And you can see how fast that goes with good quality paint. See already all the water is um, incorporated into the paint. Then I add some more. And it's already stirred in and you will see that with the, the poor quality paint, if you use that, it's going to take a lot more stirring to get the water into the paint. Uh, the pouring medium also helps because, you know, it just makes it one consistent... Con oh, that's someone who wants me um, or needs me. <laughs> so um, putting the water in really helps with uh, getting it all mixed up for a good consistency and already I am almost there because when I hold up the stick and you can't see it from the uh, above view but if you go to video number 31 uh, that's where I show it from an, a different angle and you can see exactly what kind of consistency you're looking for because that's very important so right now I'm there I'm confident that I have the right consistency because when I hold the, the little stick horizontal, I see a little buildup on the stick, not too much. And as soon as I hold it vertical, it just drips off like, not in drips, but more in a stream like honey. You want to have one continuous stream going down, but then you don't want it too thick. Having it a little bit too thick will also give you that 
sort of a, uh, a honey-like consistency that comes off the stick, but you don't want it too thick. It'll work though, but your paint thickness will eh, sometimes give you cracks, sometimes give you bumps. So this is what we're looking for. On the stick it, it shows you a little build up and then when you hold it up it just comes off like in a nice stream and in the end it gives you about four drops and then you're there. So that one's ready. Then I want to, um, I'm doing a background and um, I want some of this color. It's uh, burnt sienna. It's a very pretty color. Also Amsterdam acrylics. Not too much though because it takes over very fast. And that's something that you will have to find out for yourself that some colors really take over. So now I add the, uh, the Liquitex pouring medium. This one, this is the one you're looking for, 5432. That's the, some sort of a brand number or type number, but it's uh, pouring medium. It's not the varnish, not, nothing like that. It's really called pouring medium. So you have them in uh, this, this size, almost a liter. You have them in a quarter of a liter and you have it in gallons. So you see that I put a little bit in there and then I get that all smoothed up. And that's important. You don't want to add water straight away. You just want to get the pouring medium into the paint like that. And when it's smooth, you can add a little bit of water, not too much. Don't do that because it just takes you longer to mix the, the color. So right now it's already in, the water is in the paint and I add a little more, a couple of stirs, not too much. Right now it's already in the paint. That's how fast it goes. And if you put a lot of water in, I'll do that in a bit. I'll show you how long that takes for, um, you know, the paint and the pouring medium to pick up the water. So right now it's all mixed up. I'm making sure I scrape the bottom in the middle. I make sure I do the sides, just along the sides, very important. And then I check for the consistency. I have a build up, I hold the stick and it's running off in uh, big chunks. You can't see it again. For the consistency, you need to go to video number 31. So a little bit of water. Go along the sides and after a while you pretty much know how much water you have to add to get the consistency. That's it. It's ready. Then we go to the next color because I want this uh, background to be uh, pretty dark. So the next color I'm adding is the Van Dyke Brown, which I pretty much like. See how much I put in there? Just a little bit. And, oops, I did a little mistake. This is graphite. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got the bloopers. But that doesn't matter. I'll, um... Nah, I'm not going to use it because it's a metallic color. I wasn't watching out. I meant to use this one. So this is Van Dyke Brown 403. It's half transparent semi-transparent I guess you call it so there we go put the same amount in and get the pouring medium put about 20 to 30 percent in just a little bit then get the stirring stick and stir that into the paint before adding water remember and it's all smooth and pasty and then we put in a little bit of water. Uh, after this video, I'll be doing another video because I have uh, an, a lot of news to tell you guys. And I want to promote someone's um, YouTube channel, some very nice, um, a nice person that I, I'd like you all to go and watch because he's, he's really kind. So let's get on with this. 
if you put in the little bits of water, you'll have no problem at all getting it to the right consistency. And I'm speeding it up now here just a little bit, guys, because, um, you know, I'm already 10 minutes into this video. So, um, there we go. Checking for the thickness. Too thick. Just a little bit of water. Mixing it up again. Yep, almost there, just a little bit. Going along the sides. I can't, you know, I can't tell you how important that is to do the scrape along the sides and then do the a little bit in the middle there that you're sure you get everything. And that's it, it's ready to go. Now I still want some, um, a bright color. So I'm going to take uh, number 270, it's called Azo Yellow Deep, and this is a color that I usually put into my, um, my go-to colors. It's almost empty, and I, uh, not too much though, because that makes it, you know, sometimes it comes straight through that color. So what I found out is that the, um, the orange, the yellow, and sometimes the green, those are the colors that really take over and you have to watch out for that. So here we go. I'll stop um, when I've, um, I've done these colors. I think I have enough for a, a little background. So, <clears throat> mixing it up as we go. Just a little bit more. See how I never put all the water in at once? That's so important. So don't do that. Just do it little by little. And it'll be smooth and silky. Just the way we want it. Checking for the consistency. Almost there. Just a little bit more. Going down the middle of the cup. Going along the sides. There we go. Now I'm testing it again. It's perfect. So we have those four colors. The uh, very dark Van Dyke Brown, the Burnt Cyana, the Azo Yellow Deep, and my favorite color is the Turquoise Green. Uh, that's, oh, and I need some, I want some white. Because uh, the last couple of times I've um, I've I didn't use the white, and uh, I sort of like using white. So here we go. Here it comes. Come on. This one is almost empty too, but I have a new one. Don't worry. Okay, some white. Put that away. Mm, cleaning off the table because we're almost ready to pour. That's it. Then adding the pouring liquid. Pouring medium, I should say, before you all get mixed up with what I'm uh, telling you guys. So, this goes really fast. See that? Then a little bit of water. So you've seen this now like six million times, guys. You gotta, gotta understand it now. And otherwise, you just play this video as many times as you like. There we go. Ooh, I'm spattering all over the place because I do want to speed it up a little. Oh, let's see for the thickness. Oh, almost there. See, you can always add a little bit more water, but you can't take the water out. So you better be careful when you're mixing. And you know, put on some music, watch a video. I don't know, watch Judge Judy like I usually do. And just make it into something 
you know, you're enjoying. It's your Zen moment. Think about your pour while you're doing this. Think about how you're going to pour, what you're going to pour. And it's, um, it's going to be an enjoyable part of your um, creative hour. So, put that away. I'm making a bit of room here. Now, I get my canvas. And what you do is um, you can put silicone oil in every single color. You can do that. That's what I usually always did. But I want um, a, a background with not that many of those uh, cells. So right now, I'm only going to put silicone. This is my silicone bottle. I'm only going to put silicone in the white. So there we go. I'm mixing it up. Just like that. And the more you mix your silicone, the smaller the cells will be. So if you want bigger cells, then at the end, you just add a few drops. And this is not science, people. So just see what works for you. The silicone, you can get it in uh, the car shops where you buy the shampoo for the car and the wax and all that stuff. They have silicone in spray bottles. Uh, you can buy it at a do-it-self shop. You spray it on hinges when they, you know, creak or squeaky. So it's just normal silicone. And you have them in all sorts of brands and thicknesses and additives. And you'll have to experiment a little what works best for you. So what I've heard is that liquid wrench really works. I've heard that 3-in-1 really works well. But if you want to have something that you're totally sure of, you go for a treadmill lubricant. And you can buy that on eBay. I just um, ordered some myself. I've never used it before, but I've heard so many stories that it works like a charm. So it's called treadmill uh, lubricant, and it has to be silicon-based. So you have to watch out, because some of those treadmill lubricants have no silicone in them. But you have to go for the for the um, it says on the on the label it will say silicone 100% silicone that's it you have to buy that. Then you can uh, also uh, order on eBay or Amazon you can order dimethicone and that's the uh, body uh, silicone that you can use on your body or in your hair and that works also. You can find it in uh, products like Frizz Ease that you put in your hair to, um, you know, help you with the, the hair getting frizzy. And if you look on the label, the first ingredient or second should say dimethicone. And if you have that, that'll work. So that's some of the types of silicone you can use. It, it has to be silicone. Uh, WD-40 has a lot of um, sorts of uh, sprays, and a lot of them don't have silicone. So don't buy that unless it says silicone. So we got that covered. So now we have the silicone in the white. And just for uh, the cell sake, I'm going to put a little bit in my turquoise green. That's what I'm going to do. Mix it up here. OK. Add two or three drops at the end and not stir. So now I'm going to get my cup. And I'm going to start off with a heavy color, and that's white. So that's what I like to do. Start off with the white, and then layer on top of that a couple of transparent colors, or semi-transparent. And what you, oops, what you need is to pour it from up high, and that, that helps to create the cells. So if you hold it up and you pour it in, let there be at least this much distance from your pouring cup to the cup that is going to be your dirty pour. Because that really helps. You can already see stuff going on there because I poured it in from a height. And people, this is really important. Don't think that it's not important because it is. Just pour it from up high and you can already see stuff going on in the cup. 
pouring in some more turquoise, then coming back in with my white. And of course there's a, a little bit of air bubbles coming in because I'm pouring up from so high, but that's no problem because you'll get those out with your torch. But more on the torch a little later. So now I'm going to clean out the cups, put the last of the colors in, and if you do this without the distance, that's no problem at all, because you've got a lot of mixing already in that cup. So here we go. That's the last of the turquoise. Then the last of the yellow and when you can if you have some left always use that height from pouring because then it mixes itself a little bit that's that and then I'm up to my last of the burnt sienna that's the last of it and I'll put the cups away. So that was that. Now we have a, a cup and this is called a dirty pour because we put everything in one cup and that's why they call it a dirty pour. <coughs> now I have to clean the table. So right now I'm gonna just clean off the, the drips that I spilled that's that then I have my canvas and what you would want to do if you want to do it right put these push pins in the corners and you can use them like uh, I don't know a, a lot of times because I just pull them out you can almost push them in with your uh, thumb you don't really need a hammer but if you've got uh, thumbs that hurt, then you can just hammer them in. I'll just put them in just like this, and then I'll hammer the last bit. So these, uh, these push pins, they help to keep your, uh, the bottom of your canvas uh, just a little cleaner, just like that there's going to be some dripping over the sides and then the push pins just help to keep it elevated so it doesn't get dirty so here we go then you can do two things if you just pour it out like this that's just called a pour you can do this put your canvas on top of the cup and flip it over that's called a flip cup and that's what we're going to do because that is the easiest way to do it so what you do is you hold your cup like this you have your hand under it, you put your canvas on top, and you just flip it around like that. Did you see how I did that? Do it one more time, just flip it like that. Give it a little time to settle. It doesn't have to be that long, but just a little time to settle. And then what you do is pull the cup over, but don't let everything drip in the middle of your pour because that is so ugly. So many people do that because they're mesmerized by what they've just created and just let everything drip in the middle. So what you can do is push it a little to one corner and pull it back like that. See that? And there we already have a lot of cells. And what you do is leave the cup like this, horizontal, because then a lot of the paint what's left in the cup will flow flow down and you just do this you let that paint run on the canvas because you need it because it has to cover the whole canvas okay now what you do because if you really like this in the middle all those cells you want to keep those so you just tilt very slowly but you want to keep those nice and round cells. If you tilt too, too fast, it'll all go zigzaggy. 
so that's why I'm really slowly slowly tilting as you can see and it's already going over the side and there and there and now I stop because now I want a torch <coughs> as you can see it's just a normal chef's torch you um, they use it for uh, creme brulee and all you do is just go really fast over the paint like this just as fast as you can you don't want to keep it in one place because then you get your paint burned so that's about it and why do I do that because I want some more cells and I want them to go bigger that's about it then I want it to go down here help it a little bit with your finger because if you make the canvas wet then it just slides a little faster and down here or you take your palette knife and you put it on there just like that okay that's all I'm gonna do now you fix up your corners because the corners are always left a little white just like that pick it up from your table and I only have one left that's it and I do want to let it run off a little down here because I want the cells to be a little bit bigger but that is a pretty pour I'm pretty uh, satisfied with this one and then I come in again with the torch to see if all the silicon has come up to the surface and to let the little bubbles burst just like that and you can do that a couple of times you can even do this just bounce it on the table a little and help help the little air bubbles come up and then torch it again that's it and now it's not a totally done deal because if you don't like this you could have some more paint you can even go mix some because it's um, it's going nowhere this uh, this thing right now and mix up some more paint and you could just pour right over it if you wanted to so don't think oh, I don't like it and now I'm stuck with the ugly canvas nope you can go mix some paint and pour right over it if you really want to but I like this one so I'm not going to be doing that it has something, I don't know, something organic over it. I really, I really like it. And I'm going to keep it this way. So the torch is a chef's torch. You buy it at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can buy it at the Home Depot. You can buy it in a shop where you can buy uh, the cooking stuff, like um, when you're baking cakes. They absolutely have these kind of torches and you fill it in the bottom there you can fill it this one um, I, I like to use this this type of torch they're very cheap they're uh, $8.95 and I think about two or three months then I have to throw them away because all the paint is stuck here and then I can't turn it on anymore but you know they're so cheap so who cares so this is uh, what we got uh, I explained the torch, I explained the silicone, I explained the pouring. So from here on, it's just a lot of experimenting. And if you want to do it very cheap, what you can also do is just do it with uh, Yupo paper. I'll get one or two. This is uh, Yupo, and I think I got two or one. No, nah, I got two. Um, you can Google it, 
If you're in Holland, just Google Jupo Coupen. Coupen is buying. So if you have this Jupo, it is totally waterproof and it will not buckle, not warp. It will do nothing. It will just stay absolutely as it is. And what you just do is put some of that paint on your Jupo because a lot of people get upset when you you know have so much paint left on the uh, on the table but what you can do is just put some on here like that I'm gonna make a little bit of a mess but normally I wouldn't do that but I have to because I want to show you guys what I'm uh, talking about then you get your cups that you just poured your um, paint out of and there's always some left so we put in some of that color on top just like that and some white look at that that is beautiful you see that <laughs> that's because there's a, the silicone in the white and let's find the other one where the silicone was in that was the turquoise and then another thing you know i told you guys that just um bef when i put the colors in the in the cup you know speed helps to do stuff to paint so you got to do that and that speed i'm talking about is the speed when you pour from up high and you pour it into the cup that's what really helps makes those um, makes those cells so now I'm gonna cut this in half which I should have done before but this is just to show you guys what you can do with the rest so I'll show you um, up close what that white did that's cool huh okay so then you press your other Yupo on top and you give it a slight little nudge so it spreads and then you just open it up just like that and you torch it. And this is the good thing about Yupo, you can just torch Yupo. So now um, this is a bad example because I, I muddied up all this paint but if you look up close you can see where the white comes through and the yellow comes through there's some more there and you can go to um, different lengths of um, manipulating I even have some uh, white left over from uh, last week I guess And you can just do a lot of stuff with it. Just, you know, dink around and play with it. You can just swipe it like that. There's already tons of cells popping up. And then when you torch it again, all that silicone gets warm and gets pulled to the, to the surface. See how that works it is very pretty and this is just a swipe let's see I have a couple of colors so I'll just go on and show you different things you can do because um, you know I'm just videoing anyway so I just put some color there get back the Yupo pull it over just like that and torch it every time you torch that silicone gets pulled to the surface see that it just gets pulled to the surface and it creates those beautiful cells so I don't have much left let's see if I put a little silicone in this one and a little bit of water 
Oh, this is pretty much too thin, but just for the sake of showing you guys stuff, I guess it'll work. Yeah, that's too much of silicone, <laughs> and the paint is too thin. When the paint gets too thin, you're going to get stuck with something that really doesn't work. See, see the brown? It just spreads all over because it's just too thin. But I do have a little other paint here. Let's see if that works. Nah, that is totally gone muddy. But just do this, you know, after you do uh, some sort of a canvas, put your canvas aside and play with that paint that is left over because you will be learning so much about how this stuff reacts, how the silicone works, how the torch reacts. And if you're scared about a torch, I've heard a couple of people say, oh, I'm so scared to use a torch. Go outside and just practice. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. And in a studio, you really need a fire extinguisher. And I want to really um, tell you guys to do that because, you know, you might never need it, but if you need it, it's good to have one, right? So this is a mess right now. It did, did do funny stuff. See that? It is nice, but it's all gone muddy right now, so... I'm going to throw this away and um, I'll uh, get you guys down. I'll show you the uh, show you the other canvas. Oh, yep, there go all my stabilizing uh, rods. So there you are. That's the pour we did. Show you the sides so that it's nicely covered. And the front. Let's see. Here we go. See if I can get you close up. There we are. Yes, and my iPad is acting really nice because I cleaned it totally. Okay, it's almost 40 minutes, so this is it. This was the instruction video, and if you just do like I did, you'll be good to go. You'll be learning in no time how to do beautiful pours. And you'll have a lot of fun. So thank you all for watching. And see you in my next video. Which will be in about an hour I guess. Bye bye.